Good morning. It's Monday. Good morning, Jensen. That's how we feel about it. Oh, man. <sighs> All right, I gotta get him into preschool and then get to my school, and I lost my keys a week ago, and I still haven't found them, so I have to go the long way through the office and ask somebody to open my door. <laughs> okay, time to head in. Okay, I made it with just a few minutes left before our advisory period starts. So we start with a class where we just like do the announcements. We have like a little news show that we show. <laughs> so that's how we start the day. I've gotta get two laptops set up. It's really hard to teach with just one device. That doesn't really work out with like Zoom and stuff because you can't see the chat. Ah! It's my alarm to be ready. <laughs> I need my charger, I need some water. <laughs> I need some coffee, but I think I can make it in between this class and the next class, okay. Okay, so I have my computer and then my school Chromebook, so I use both of these. I think I'm gonna start the meeting through this one and then like show video through this one. Oh yeah, and then I'm gonna use this today. I think I'll get it set up for my class after this one, just so I have time to look at everything. But yeah, it really helps to have a microphone too. Someone mailed me these earrings, aren't they cute? <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. Okay, who has an idea for the question for today? <laughs> I feel like I'm all out of ideas. What are you eating for breakfast? Okay, I'm putting it in. I haven't had breakfast yet, but I have an abundance of, where are they? Pop-Tarts, so that's probably what I'll have. I'm excited about this. I feel like it's gonna make me like a podcaster. This is the Snowball Ice Black. Ooh, okay, what's this? <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh, it's this. The stand and the charger. This is very cool. It's very like hefty. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, pretty easy setup. I can do this quickly. All right, ooh. It doesn't take up very much space either. All right, I like this. And then USB cord so you can put it into your computer. And let me check on my coffee. I really am loving this little setup. This is great. One time a kid thought this was alcohol, so. Just to clarify, it is sugar. Let's see, blue snowball, okay. Ooh, hi guys, wait a minute. Let's see. This one. Oh, there we go. There we go. Mute, mute. Okay. Can you hear me through this computer? Yeah? Okay. I just got this new microphone. <laughs> it's like fancy style. So, setting it up. There we go. All right. So, if I'm like right here, can you hear it? Can you hear me still? Okay. Cool. Okay. Because I just didn't want to feel like I had to like go like this the entire time and be right up next to it. <laughs> so, okay. It's all right if I'm back here. Okay. 
loud. Too loud if I'm up close. Okay, good. That's what we want. So I didn't want to have to be like all hunched over to <laughs> for you to hear me. Okay, cool. So I was setting that up. All right, we've got a two laptop system today so that I can let you in over here and then talk to you over here. Oh, it's World Teacher's Day. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I guess this means I can like, I don't know, buy myself ice cream or something? <laughs> All right, how are we doing on people? We have 32. 32 of us today. Ah, which is how many we should have. All right. All right, we'll do it today. So even if I can't hear you, it's okay. We go, good morning. Eyes up. Hearts up. Mind sharp. Compassion on full blast. And then I take a sip of my coffee. Okay, let's go. Ooh, I need more sweetener in there. All right, and Max says it's actually also is it Children's Health Day, Consignment Day, Apple Betty Day, Do Something Nice Day, Get Funky Day, and Rhode Island Day. All right, <laughs> a lot, a lot to celebrate today. A lot of things going on. All right, so our Google Classroom is getting pretty full. It's kind of like you know if you had a binder for history, like at this point, you know you'd be filling it with a lot of papers, but for now, it's just a Google Classroom, so you kind of have like a lot of papers in here. Um, so we have to scroll down a little ways to get to the daily slides, but remember that the daily slides are here. These will, if you want to know what we're doing in class, you can get a little sneak peek. All right, so you've got your attendance question, which is going to make me jealous. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, we're gonna look at the Fertile Crescent song again, and then just make sure that everybody turned in their notes. I think there's some people that just forgot, so we're gonna double check, and make sure you can get points for those. And then today we're gonna do a listen-wise lesson about an ancient Mesopotamian city. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever tried listen-wise before, but I will show you how to use it today. I already made you an account. Um, and so, for independent work, you're just completing, there might be some things that you still have to work on on the Listen Wise assignment. So, um, A period today will be mandatory if we need to, to work on some things. So at the end of class, I'll tell you if you're coming to A period, but you probably know if you are. Um, yeah, if you have any missing assignments that we need to take care of. Last week, let me show you the video. Jensen was so sad that you guys didn't come to to A period. He was like ready and waiting for you. He was very disappointed. <laughs> let me see. Mm -hmm. let me where see. are they? Let me see. Let me see. Let's see it. Let's see, where are you guys? Where are you guys? <laughs> Alrighty, so let's start with Fertile Crescent to get our minds back in back in ancient Mesopotamia real quick. So, as you can see, we are at the beginning of the Mesopotamian Empire, so there's still so much to go. We haven't gotten to Babylon yet, we haven't gotten to Nebuchadnezzar, we haven't gotten to the Hebrews, there's still a lot going on there, so um, yeah, we're, we're just getting started. Um, does anybody have any questions about the notes? I think I, I wrote you a little private message if you forgot to turn them in. Did everybody see those this morning? You can still turn it in to get all your points. I think at the beginning of the year I said like half credit for late work, but whatever. I haven't I haven't been doing that. <laughs> I've just been giving you credit. So um, if you turn it in, you're good. Um, do you guys remember how to get to the missing work link or like the missing work form? Okay, Max turned it in. Good. 
So when you turn it in, just also make sure to fill in the missing work form. All right, we're going to try a website called ListenWise today. Kind of like listening to a podcast or like listening to the radio. It's cool that you can just like learn something like without even reading. Like you're just sitting there <laughs> and you can just absorb information into your brain. So um, yeah, ooh, you guys should make your own podcast. That's a really good idea. So we're gonna practice just absorbing information into your brain without having to read anything. Although there is the option to read along if you really want to. Okay, one class down. So that was my sixth grade um, ancient history class and we were using ListenWise today. Um, we read this really cool story or listened to this really cool story about people living on this historical site. So, you know, 7,000 years ago, humans lived there and it survived all this time but now refugees are living within it but historians and archaeologists want to study it so they kicked out the refugees so that they can study it so that's kind of the question of the day like well this was built as a safe place for humans 7,000 years ago so shouldn't we allow humans to still live there but on the other hand it would be so great to study it and learn more from it so maybe we can move those people out so that's like the whole question of the of the story and they give some background information and stuff um yeah so we had some interesting discussions now i'm switching over to eighth grade english so i have to kind of like change my whole state of mind the students really liked this uh microphone looks like this it's nice that i can have it like off to the side and they said when i was like up close next to it it was like too loud so it's nice that i can just like speak without having to like bend over and talk into it. it it just picks up my voice so thank you so much to logitech for sending this one to me i really really like it i think it's really helpful to have like nice clear audio when i'm teaching that makes a big difference and thank you to logitech for sponsoring this video okay we only have 10 minutes in between classes so now i need to get my zoom meetings all opened up and everything for the next class coming in and try to remember what we're doing <laughs> okay so weird that like every time you go to the bathroom you gotta put these on well i guess most people are just fully teaching with these all day long period two can you guys hear me okay yeah okay okay so once you're in go ahead and answer the attendance question what book are you reading right now we're gonna look at your reading stuff today. Your daily slides are almost at the bottom. So these are important. You're gonna need these today, okay? So you've got your attendance question. If you can't tell, today is gonna to be all about reading. So your attendance question is, what book are you currently reading? Um, we're gonna go over an example of how to do your bookstagram project that's due at the end of the semester. All right, that looks awesome, okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen again and show you where you can find an example of how to do the bookstagram project and Just as like a tip if you guys do have Instagram. I know not everybody has All of those you know platforms and everything, but if you do have um, Instagram if you you know how to like search hashtags do you guys ever search hashtags? <laughs> Let's see if you search the hashtag books bleh, bookstagram Let's see. Okay, there's 50 million posts, so it takes a little while to go through. <laughs> but there's all these like really pretty accounts of people, they like take pictures of their books and review them and you find out like what new books are coming out and you can like follow people that have similar taste to you and stuff. So I really like finding books, new books to read on Instagram. So that's usually what I do. Um, so that's why we're kind of do making our own little like practice Instagram. So here are some examples of some books that I've read this year. Um, remember that we're about halfway through the semester at this point, so you should have about five. You should be about halfway through here. Yeah, so I did not do it with selfies because I took these from my real Instagram where I don't really do it with selfies. So you guys are going to do yours with selfies. Um, but here are 10 recommendations. Okay, you can do the virtual thing. Um, you can shop by age and grade. So you guys probably want to go up to like 8th or ninth grade. Maybe click on 8th grade. Of these they have 
Riverdale books. <laughs> okay, done with another class. Now I have another one. They just feel so long. <laughs> I do send them out into like uh, breakout rooms and stuff, but even those, I don't know. I don't know how they're going. What I always say is the person whose birthday is coming up next, like closest, goes first, and then they get to pick the next person who talks, and they get to pick the next person, and they get to pick the next person. Um, they're literally in the breakout rooms to give each other answers. I'm like, feel free to cheat, give each other answers. And they usually sit there and do nothing. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, we're studying today uh, one of my favorite, favorite stories called Museum Indians by Susan Power. I love it, there's so much in it. It's nice and short, but there's tons of symbol symbolism. It's so well written, there are so many great themes. So we've been on this story for probably longer than we should have been, but yeah. <sighs> I also have to remember to order my Postmates for lunch like halfway through this period so that it comes on time because I did not remember a lunch I usually don't <laughs> it's costing me a lot of money, but there are only so many things I can keep in my brain at one time and Our Trader Joe's always has a line around the corner. It has for six months. That's like really what's throwing off all of my grocery shopping That bell is so delayed it was already 1130 um, but was I saying, yeah, the the lines at Trader Joe's have thrown off my grocery shopping because I used to, you know, stop on my way home from work a couple times a week and I just kind of would always buy the same things. We'd have, you know, a couple of different things for dinner just from the same list pretty much and then, you know, I'd bring those things for lunch and I haven't been wanting to stop. It's just, it's a pain. So, I haven't figured that out yet. Like, I do not have, like, a new routine. It's been six months and I absolutely do not have a new routine. I can't find my keys. I don't know where they are. I don't have a lunch. I didn't eat breakfast. I have a stinking Pop-Tart. I had to, like, make my uh, coffee here. I, like, barely, like, I do not have this figured out at all. At all, at all. Ugh. I'm not doing great, I'm not gonna lie. The only thing going well is reading. I've read a ton of books, that's that's about it, because I wanna escape from this weird reality TV show that we all unwittingly live in. So anyway, I'm gonna get ready for my third regular class of the day. Then we have lunch, and then we also have like a second class period for all the classes we had this morning, and they're a little shorter, and I use them to help kids who have fallen behind, and then if people want to jump in and ask questions with a smaller group, then that's easier to do than like when we're all in class together. Um, yeah, so yeah, okay, anyway, <laughs> time for the next class. Okay, a couple of questions for you now based on this page. First question is, it's kind of hidden within the story, but this author does a really good job of putting these little details in there where you almost don't even notice them, but then you realize how big they are. So um, the buckskin dress, how do they display it? In what way do they make it seen? Yeah, Rajul says on a headless mannequin. And you guys have probably seen a headless mannequin before, like at the mall, right? If you go to Forever 21 or something. I mean, it's been a while since any of us have been to a mall, I guess. But sometimes the, the mannequins are headless, you know, because you're just trying to see how the clothes look. So I imagine that this was probably a very unintentional thing. You know, whoever was the museum curator, designer, as they are setting up this display, you know, it's kind of normal for, for a mannequin to be headless. But thinking back to the video that you watched, the Crash Course video with John Green, um, why do you think that this could be difficult for somebody who's Native American to see? Why would it be especially hard to see your family's clothing on a headless mannequin? And think back to like the historical context. It does symbolize death, mm-hmm. And then even like literally, in what ways did the natives and the English 
fight and what did they do to the bodies? Where does the name Redskin come from even? No, so remember the, was it the littler girl? Yeah, I think it was those, the younger girls when they were talking about uh, misconceptions of where the word Redskin comes from. Their skin is not red, but from the battles, from the fighting, when they would scalp people or decapitate them, that's where the blood came from. Like the, the term red skin is like very, very violent, just at its surface. Yeah, so that's why when people are like, what's the big deal? They're like, I mean, you're talking about slaughtering us and scalping us and decapitating us. And some of the war tactics to show that you had killed the chief or whoever in the tribe was to decapitate them and then take their head and show you know the people back at the fort that you you killed the leader and you have their head yeah this also happened in latin america as well mm -hmm. so considering that history to see this buckskin dress on a headless mannequin is pretty grotesque for the mom, right? That's pretty horrible to see. And again, I don't think it was intentional. Like whoever did that, probably that's probably not what they were trying to show. But if they had like looked into the history a little bit more, they might not have done that because that's kind of disturbing, right? If you actually know the history, like her mom does. Her mom knows a lot of history and a lot of what happened in her family's history. So uh, even just like those little details throughout this story, ev almost every single sentence applies to, it has something to do with today and then something to do with the past as well. So as you're reading through the whole story, everything kind of has a double meaning for that day when she's actually at the museum and then what had happened in the past. Right, you would think that a museum would know right you would think like isn't history like your thing <laughs> it's like your expertise <laughs> shouldn't you know about this but they're not thinking of it from the native american perspective right they're just thinking like oh here's a here's a pretty dress let's look at it like we're at a mall and not considering the history behind it and even smart people do that sometimes right they're not thinking about what it will look like to somebody who, because they're not thinking of Indians as real people, right? They're not thinking of Native Americans as real people. They're just thinking of it as a somebody from the past. They're not thinking that they're gonna come see it today. The second question I have for you is, why does the mom identify with the buffalo? What are the similarities that she sees between them? And I'm going to send you into breakout rooms so that you can talk about this together. So there'll be about four of you in each room. Whoever's birthday is coming up next, whosoever's birthday is soonest, you are going to go first. And then you get to pick the next person. And then they pick the next person. And they pick the next person. Okay? I'm going to give you five minutes. And so you're going to talk about the similarities between the mother and the buffalo. Why does she identify with the buffalo? And again, thinking about like today and thinking about history, because that's what the mom always does. She's always thinking about now and the past, okay? So I'm gonna send you out into breakout rooms for five minutes. Oh dear, I just made one big breakout room, Never mind. <laughs> All right, I just had lunch outside. I forgot to bring the camera out there, but um, it's finally not over 100 degrees outside. It's October, and we're finally in like the 90 degree weather, which in the shade felt pretty good. So I ordered some Panera, it's my little iced coffee, and a sandwich, and just ate outside. So we have an hour for, for lunch now because we have to give the kids enough time to come to campus and get school lunch if they, you know, if that's something that they do. Um, my battery is about to die. I see it flashing at me, but um, I guess I better go before I get cut off. So yeah, welcome to my very empty classroom. Alrighty.